Hello and welcome again to this particular session and in this one we are going to begin a very formidable important solid topic that is foreign branches. Surely you can expect a question out of this particular topic. It's quite an important one as I have already told you and as far as this particular topic is concerned not very complicated but at the same time bit of more attention is required on your part. Right. So, first of all, we must understand the basics of the foreign branches. Quite obviously, foreign branches are the name itself is suggesting. Suppose there is head office and head office is located here in India. We presume for a while. Correct? Head office is in India and it has a branch and branch is located, let us say, in UK or USA, whatever you may like to write. So, in this case, branch is located in a foreign country. That means outside the what we call domestic territory of the nation. So, that is why this time this particular branch will be considered as foreign branches. Is it clear to you or not? Quite obviously, foreign branches are also like independent branches and they have got complete liberty to prepare their own accounts, correct? And they can take their own decisions. So, quite obviously, this particular branch, since it is operating in a different country, so in this case, for example, branch is operating in UK, so it must have prepared its accounts in foreign currency, that is pounds, isn't it or not? So, this time, branch has prepared its account in a currency which is other than the what we call uh, currency of the head office or other than the currency of the nation where the head office is located. Since head office is located in India, quite obviously, the currency of India is rupee. So, branch has prepared its account in a currency other than rupee. So, when branch prepares its, prepares its account in a currency which is other than the currency of the nation where head office is located, then it is said that branch has prepared its accounts in foreign currency. Are you getting my point or not? If I am going to ask you what is foreign currency, you should be in a position to let me know that foreign currency is the currency other than the reporting currency. In this case, rupee will be termed as reporting currency. Why? <coughs> Why rupee will be termed as reporting currency? Because head office is located in India and the reporting currency of India and the currency of India is rupee. So, the reporting currency will be rupee. Reporting currency means report currency of the nation where head office is located. First of all, you need to understand. You should not actually <coughs> make a sort of analysis in your heart that reporting currency may rupee. No. Head office is located in India. Currency of India is rupee. That is why reporting currency is rupee. Is it clear to you or not? So, we may say that reporting currency is the currency of the nation where head office is located. Similarly, foreign currency here means currency other than reporting currency. First of all, you need to understand this. Now, what we are supposed to do? Since branch has prepared its, foreign, its accounts in foreign currency, so when branch will send the trial balance to us, quite obviously all the items over there are in foreign currency, in this case pounds. Isn't it or not? So, in order to incorporate the trial balance and in order to prepare finally the consolidated financials, we need to convert the trial balance of the branch into the reporting currency because trial balance of the branch is in foreign currency and in order to incorporate the trial, trial, trial balance items of the branch, correct, to prepare the consolidated financials, we need to actually convert the foreign currency into reporting currency. That means all these items which branch has written and might have written actually in the uh, foreign currency will have to be converted into the reporting currency. How we are going to convert those what we call that's a different matter that I will let you know in a short while. First, let me actually clear the doubts with respect to foreign currency and reporting currency. Take another case. For example, now in this case, I presume head office is actually in USA. Head office is in USA and head office is having a branch office in India. Head office is having a branch in India. Now, could you tell me what is the reporting currency in this case? What did I tell you earlier? Reporting currency is the currency of the nation in which head office is located. Since head office is located in USA, currency of USA is dollars. So, this time your reporting currency will be dollars. 
and any currency other than reporting currency will be termed as foreign currencies because branch is located in india branch must be preparing its account on the basis of rupee that is the currency of india but in this case rupee will be termed as foreign currency because it is the currency other than the reporting currency so reporting currency doesn't always means rupee correct so don't be under this particular phobia reporting currency means in simple words the currency of the country in which head office is located and branch because it's situated in a different country so branch must have prepared what we call its account in the currency of the nation in which it is located so that currency is known as foreign currency and we, we will have to actually ultimately convert the branch trial balance into the reporting currency as per some rules and as per some rules which i will let you know in a short while after some time before we move further let me also make it clear we have a habit of telling what we call foreign branches actually let us say this is the head office and head office is in india let us say we presume for simplicity's sake and let us say this head office has got two branches branch one is in usa and let us say there is another branch branch two and this branch two is in canada let us say no doubt and without any iota of doubt in this case branch one and branch two we will call them actually foreign branches but logically instead of using the term foreign branches we should use the term foreign operations instead of calling them foreign branches we should call them foreign operations these are foreign operations these are foreign operations is it clear to you or not in simple words foreign operation or for simplicity's sake, you may say foreign branches, but it is better to call them foreign operation. The foreign operations are basically categorized into two parts. We will see later on. One part is known as integral foreign operations. Integral foreign operation. Integral, you need not require to write at this moment. Integral foreign operation, while other part is known as non-integral foreign operation. Non-integral foreign operation non-integral foreign operation correct i o i f o integral foreign operation or non-integral foreign operation nifo what we mean by integral or non-integral in simple words foreign branches could be an integral foreign operation or it could be a non-integral foreign branches non-integral foreign operation in simple words let us say our head office actually deals in computer and its accessories correct head office deals in computer sort of business or what we call computer accessories production a branch or a foreign operation is considered as integral foreign operation when activities of the branch is similar to the head office similar to the activities of the head office suppose if in this case i would say that branch one which is in usa is engaged in similar sort of activities let us say it is also producing computer and accessories so i will call it that branch is involved or engaged in similar activities or activities similar to the head office so this time it will be known as integral foreign operation so integral foreign operation or integral foreign branch in simple words means an entity which is engaged in activities which are absolutely similar to the activities of the head office contrary to it a non-integral foreign operation is one whose activities are absolutely different to the activities carried out by head office. For example, it is engaged in manufacturing of computer and let us say it is engaged in manufacturing of rice or something else, a product which is entirely different from what we call computer accessories. Then, can I, then this branch will be known as non-integral foreign operation. Is it clear to you or not? Due to some or other reason, you need to know that whether it is a, whether it is an integral foreign branch or whether it is non-integral foreign branch or in simple words integral foreign operation or non-integral foreign operation why this demarcation why this classification is so important reason being is that just a moment ago i told you all the foreign branches or foreign operations they operate in a country or in a nation different from where head office is located so quite obviously they have they are preparing their accounts in foreign currency and as I told you, ultimately at the end of the year, whether the foreign branches is integral or whether they are non-integral, ultimately they will prepare their trial balance in foreign currency and they will send the trial balance to the head office. 
Now, head office will have to convert the trial balance which is prepared in foreign currency into what we call reporting currency. We are presuming that reporting currency is rupee because head office is in India. Correct? We are presuming for a while. And let us say this branch has prepared its account in foreign currency, let us say dollars. And we further presume it is an integral foreign branch. Integral foreign branch. Because when I will convert, when I will convert the trial balance from foreign currency to reporting currency, from foreign currency to reporting currency, ultimately some difference will arise. Ultimately, some difference will arise. 99.99% some difference will arise. Correct? That difference is known as exchange difference. That difference is known as exchange difference. If it is a case of that means whenever the trial balance of the foreign branches are converted, whenever the trial balance of the foreign branches are converted into the reporting currency, it is obvious that some exchange difference will ultimately arrive. That exchange difference will be treated as or will be taken to profit and loss account if it happens to be, if the branch happens to be integral foreign branch. That is why I told you it is important for you to uh, analyze this particular point that why actually the foreign operations are demarcated into integral and non-integral foreign operations. Is it clear to you or not? So, if the branch happens to be integral foreign operation, then the difference which we would get because of the conversion of the branch trial balance into the reporting currency, that exchange difference will be taken to profit and loss account. However, if it happens to be non-integral foreign branch or non-integral foreign operation, then if there would be any difference due to conversion of the branch trial balance into the reporting currency, that difference is not taken to profit and loss account. It is taken taken to foreign currency translation reserve account. It is taken to foreign currency translation reserve account. So you need to understand all these points. Correct? I hope you have got a fair idea now. So let me remove all these things before we set out. Now whatever I have discussed Whatever I have discussed, quickly I will write some notes regarding all these things. You note it down and, and if you want to write, it would be better. So pull out your pen, pencils, sheets, whatever it is. Correct? And some important points we will write before we proceed to solve the questions. I have already told you it is very important chapter. And especially... Long question you can expect from this particular topic, even question of 16 marks have been struck in the examination in the past and they are regularly striking in the examination from this particular topic. So, this is your section 8. Section 8. And section 8 deals with foreign branches, I have already told you. Correct? So, first of all, we need to understand what are foreign branches. Just a moment ago, actually, I told you foreign branches are those branches which are situated outside the domestic territory of a nation. Correct? So, quickly, you write along with me, foreign branches. Point number one. Foreign branches. What are foreign branches? Just a moment ago, I told you foreign branches are those branches which are situ situated are those branches are those branches which are situated or which are located outside the domestic territory outside the domestic territory in simple words domestic territory just a moment ago i also told you all the foreign branches or foreign operations are basically divided into two part correct foreign branches
or foreign operations as we call them foreign operations foreign operations correct basically we categorize them into two parts as i told you a moment ago just give me a minute so all the foreign branches of foreign operations as i have already told you are basically categorized into two part one we call it integral foreign operation integral foreign operation integral foreign operation i f o as we normally call them i f o besides non integral foreign operations non integral foreign operations non integral foreign operation now as far as as far as integral foreign operations are concerned i just mentioned a bit it refers to such operations or it refers to such branches of course foreign branches without an iota of doubt correct which are operating in foreign country but they are having but they are having activities similar to the activities of the head office correct so you write here such operations such operations such operations means such foreign branches whose activities whose activities are similar to similar to activities of similar to activities of head office so they are integral foreign, foreign branches just a moment also ago also i told you that any exchange difference arising out of the conversion of the trial balance of such operations shall be transferred to profit and loss account this is the important point which you need to understand correct any exchange difference any exchange difference any exchange difference arising any exchange difference arising due to conversion of due to conversion of trial balance due to conversion of trial balance into reporting currency rc stands for reporting currency shall be transfer to profit and loss account profit and loss account this is the important point correct as far as non integral foreign operations are concerned i told you such operations such operations whose activities whose activities are different to the activities of 
in fact you write different from the activities of different from the activities of head office and as I told you any exchange difference ED any exchange difference ED stands for exchange difference arising out of or due to conversion of due to conversion of trial balance TB trial balance into reporting currency into reporting currency is transferred to foreign currency translation reserve later on I will write the full form okay I will write here itself that is foreign currency foreign currency translation reserve foreign currency translation reserve so this basic difference you need to understand now the main question is but before we further move up let me also write here I told you the meaning of reporting currency correct what we mean by reporting currency what did I what did I tell reporting currency what is reporting currency the currency of the nation where head office is located Reporting currency basically means currency of the nation, currency of the nation where head office is located, where head office is located. where head office is located is it clear to you or not then what we mean by foreign currency foreign currency as far as foreign currency is concerned in simple words it means currency other than reporting currency currency other than reporting currency other than reporting currency so after familiarizing yourself with all this concept now the next vital point is what are the rules for translating the trial balance of the branch foreign branch which the branches must have prepared in foreign currency so what are the rules to translate such trial balance prepared in reporting currency sorry prepared in foreign currency into reporting currency this is the next point translation rules translation rules when I say translation rules it means rules for translating or converting the trial balance from reporting currency translation rules that is rules for converting converting trial balance of foreign operations or foreign branches whatever you may like to write foreign operations from reporting currency to 
sorry from foreign currency to reporting currency from foreign currency to reporting currency before we start dwelling dwelling means discussion and discussing these points you need to understand that there are two types of foreign operation which i just told you a moment ago correct you have to take very you have to be very careful whether the operation is integral foreign operation or whether it is non integral first i will talk about integral foreign operation correct so what are the rules before we talk about the rules generally in the question three type of exchange rates will be given to us exchange rate in the beginning exchange rate at the end and average rate correct average exchange rate these will always be given to us in the question so if it is integral foreign branch then first item opening stock how to convert opening stock in order to convert opening stock from foreign currency to reporting currency we will have to apply opening exchange rate opening exchange rate when i writing this it means opening exchange rate what we mean by opening exchange rate i will let you know in a short while similarly if there is closing stock obviously you are going to use exchange rate at the end of the year closing exchange rate closing exchange rate similarly all revenue all revenue items all revenue items except a stock because a stock you also write in profit and loss account whether opening or closing correct all revenue item except a stock and depreciation so barring these two items opening closing stock and depreciation all other revenue items like your sale purchases salary rent insurance expense advertising expense all such items which you put in your profit and loss account so all revenue item will be converted from foreign currency to reporting currency by using the average exchange rate average exchange rate i have written average average exchange rate is it clear to you or not that will be given to you don't worry about it then you write here all monetary items all monetary items all monetary items in simple words all monetary items basically means all items of balance sheet indirectly you write in bracket assets and liabilities assets and liabilities assets and liabilities so all assets and liabilities because 99.99% items in balance sheet are monetary item monetary item means suppose in the balance sheet if i have written debtors 1 lakh rupees if i have written 1 lakh worth of data so 99.99% i will get the same amount from the data rarely some of the data may fail otherwise whatever i have written in front of data same amount i will get so when you expect to get the same amount which you have written in the balance sheet such item is known as monetary item correct however if suppose i have written fixed assets fixed assets are 10 lakh and today if i am going to sell my fixed asset it is not a certainty that i am going to get the same figure so fixed asset is not a non monetary item is it clear to you or not so 99.99% all assets and liabilities are monetary item so in other words all monetary item or all assets all liabilities will be converted on the basis of closing exchange rate closing exchange rate closing exchange rate then fifth non monetary items i gave you the example of fixed asset non monetary item non monetary item
that is fixed assets generally fixed assets are not considered as non monetary item so you can also say all balance sheet items will be converted into closing rate on the basis of closing rate barring fixed asset so fixed asset what rate you are going to apply to convert them from convert them from reporting from foreign currency to reporting currency for that i will have to take the exchange rate on the date of transaction on the date of transaction on the date of transaction that means the date on which our entity has purchased the fixed asset so what was exchange rate on that date on the basis of that rate i am going to convert it correct similarly if there is any depreciation on fixed asset quite obviously so rule for depreciation is same that mean you are going to same rate you are going to use the same rate which you have used for conversion of fixed asset so same rate is it clear to you or not now there are two items which will require bit of caution when you will convert the trial balance 7 good send to branch account goods sent to branch account goods sent to branch account and here i have written actual basis now what does it mean that mean here i am not going to apply any exchange rate and i am going to <coughs> convert it on actual basis however i will be able to explain it only when i will take one practical question is it clear to you you will have to wait for a while similarly there is another item when we were doing the independent branches in the branch trial balance there was an item head office account correct similarly here head office account head office account in branch office trial balance so if there is head office account in branch office trial balance how i am going to convert it on actual basis and i know that each one of you are very eager to know what we mean by actual basis but you believe me at this moment it is not possible to explain it so little bit of patience on your part shall be required so these are the rules for integral foreign branches correct integral foreign branches now suppose if there is non integral foreign operation suppose if operation is non integral foreign operation that mean the trial bar we are dealing with trial balance of a foreign branch which is non integral so how i am going to convert that trial balance 99% rules will be same that mean opening stock opening exchange rate closing stock closing exchange rate all revenue item same rate there is hardly any change all monetary items there is only one change there is only one change in case of integral foreign branch fixed assets are converted by using the exchange rate which was prevailing on the date of transaction however in case of non integral foreign branches we will use the closing rate closing exchange rate so non integral foreign branch conversion is more easier you can say because all the balance sheet item will be converted by using the closing exchange rate this is the only difference correct because for fixed asset we will use this rate for depreciation also we will use the same rate and goods sent to branch and head office so every rule is same but there is only one difference is it clear to you or not correct so these are the things which you need to understand now in order to make you understand better i will take one example which i have framed 
Just have a look and I will increase the view now for your better understanding. Illustrative case study. And here we are picking up this particular, this particular what we call problem. In fact, this problem I have devised myself to make you understand better. W1 Incorporation, an Indian company has a branch at Country X. You need to notice and note very carefully where the branch is situated. Here we have written branch in Country X, correct? The trial balance of the branch is as follows. This is the trial balance of the branch and trial balance is given to you in dollars, correct? So branch might be in a country where currency is dollar. So these are the items given to you and below it is also given Now below it is also given to you that head office sent goods to branch at rupees 15 lakhs. Head office books have shown an amount equal to just wait. Sometime this Just wait. It creates a bit of problem. Really sorry. Okay. So head office books have shown an amount of rupees 20 lakhs due from the branch. And then th there is closing stock that is dollar twenty thousand. And most importantly, you have been given on one four two thousand twenty one when fixed assets were purchased. The rate of exchange was rupees sixty to one dollar. Rate of exchange was rupees sixty to one dollar. And here you will have to pay extra attention. These are the exchange rates which are given to you. On 1-4-2022, which is beginning of the current year, $1 is equal to rupees 63. That means I will get $1 if I will pay 63. Similarly, by the end of the current year, $1 is equal to now 67. In economic language, we will call it Indian currency has devalued because now we will have to pay more to get $1. An average rate is equal to 65. Now here I will caution you regarding one thing. Sometime average rate is not given. If average rate will not be given straight away, then you can simply take 63 plus 67 opening and closing and divide it by 2 to get the average. Is it clear to you? But if average rate will be given, always consider average rate. Now, in order to solve the question, actually it is very easy. In order to Convert the trial balance, what I will do, I will write all these items as it is, which I have written here. See here. Pers and question also says that, presume that branch is an integral foreign operation. Question says that, presume branch is an integral foreign operation. Integral foreign operation. Integral for foreign operation means, this branch is carrying out activities which are similar to the head office. So first two columns, see here, first I will write all these items, all these items I will write as it is. You can see the first two columns is nothing but ditto copy of the question. Now branch has given trial balance as I told you and trial as per trial balance, as per trial balance fixed asset, branch has noted down at $51,000. Now I want to convert it into reporting currency. What is the reporting currency? That is rupee. Ru rupee. Correct? In order to convert this, first I will think whether it is integral foreign branch or non-integral. It is very clearly and it, it would always be given in the question. If it is not given in the question, always presume it is an integral foreign branch. Correct? Number one. In case of integral foreign branches, we have to exercise caution with respect to conversion of fixed asset only. 
with respect to conversion of fixed asset only. Because we will use the rate which was prevailing on the date of transaction and it is clearly given in the question that on 1-4-2021, actually your current year is 22-23. But you might have purchased this particular fixed asset on 1-4-2021, last year, in the beginning of the last year, in fact. Correct? At that time, the exchange rate was $1 was, $1 was equal to rupees 60. So you will use this particular rate. And you will write here rate. You will write here rate rupees 60. It means in order to get one dollar, you will have to pay 60. Now, how to convert it? Actually, simply I can tell you keep on multiplying it. Correct? But you need to understand that also. As per the rate, one dollar is equal to rupees 60. And fixed asset is worth rupees 51,000 dollars. So what will be the equivalent amount? I will have to multiply. So that is how and that is why we will keep on what we call multiplying all these items to get their corresponding amounts in the what we call Indian in the reporting currency. I should not call Indian currency. That's a difference, different matter that in this case, rupee happens to be the reporting currency. So 51,000 into 60, I have written now here 30 lakh 60,000. Similarly, opening stock, was the next item I told you opening rate we will apply opening rate is 63 I will write 63 I will multiply these two items I will get 13 lakh 86 thousand similarly purchases are 95 thousand purchases is a revenue nature item because you write purchases in the pro in the what we call trading and profit and loss account you will use the average rate average rate is 65 after multiplying you get 61 lakh 75 thousand then sales are 1,66,000. You write the amount of sales in dollars. Sale is also an item which you present in your profit and loss account. So you will again use the average rate, multiply it, you will get what we call this figure. Good sent to branch, 34,000 is given to you as per the trial balance. See, these are the debit columns. These are the credit columns of trial balance. So accordingly, you have to prepare the trial balance also. For example, sales is given towards credit side, you will write towards the credit side. Good sent to branch is written in the debit side. So, converted figure will also be written. But, in case of goods sent to branch, as I told you earlier, we need not require to use any rate. Why we don't? Because its corresponding figure in terms of reporting currency will always be given in the question. How? I will let you know. It is quite clear that whatever goods which you have sent, which head office has sent or might have sent during the year to the branch, branch has recorded those goods at dollar thirty-four thousand. At dollar thirty-four thousand. And in the question it is given that head office sent goods to branch worth rupees fifteen lakh. Head office in the current year sent rupees 15 lakh worth of goods to branch, which branch has recorded at dollar 34,000. That means the corresponding value is available. That is why I say, and I have written earlier, that we have to use actual basis because its actual value will be given. So I would say in this case that dollar 34,000 is equal to 15 lakhs. Is it clear to you or not? Correct. Similarly, carriage inward and other branch expenses are given 5,000. They, they are revenue nature item. You will use the average exchange rate. Total will be equal to 3,25,000. Then it has been given daters. Daters is an item of balance sheet. Balance sheet items uh, besides fixed assets correct are converted on the basis of closing rate. 67 is the closing rate. You will write 6,3,000. Similarly, creditors are given. Creditor also is a balance sheet item. 67 closing rate you will take. 7,000 into 67, you will write 4,69,000. Similarly, next item is cash at bank. Balance sheet item. Closing rate. You will write the corresponding figure. 
then head office account balance is given see here this is the trial balance head office account is written towards the credit side and generally in generally in the trial balance of branch head office account appears towards the credit side so that is the reason it means actually branch is supposed to pay to the head office this much of amount branch is claiming that we are supposed to pay you forty six thousand dollars dollars because it is written in dollars now in the question it is given here head office books have shown an amount equal amount of rupees 20 lakh due from branch you must try to understand this particular point actually it has got relation with this particular figure branch is claiming that we are supposed to pay you in terms of dollar 46000 and head office is claiming that we are supposed to receive rupees 20 lakhs from you in terms of indian rupee that mean the corresponding equivalent value of 46000 dollar is equal to 20 lakh that is why i told you these two items goods sent to branch and head office account balance will be converted on actual basis so in this case head office account is written towards the credit side first i will write towards the credit side converted figure 20 lakh it is given in the question itself so i will write 20 lakhs after having converted the trial balance now what you are supposed to do the next point is that what you are supposed to do now you will tally the debit side the debit side and credit side once you will tally you will find that debit side what is happening once you will tally, you will find that debit side total is 132,50,000 while credit side total is 132,59,000. That means credit side total is more. Credit side total is more. Credit side total is more. That is a sort of your liability side, you can say. That means your assets are less and your liabilities are more. That is why the difference which you will get, this difference, this difference which you will get this difference will be considered as this difference will be considered as exchange difference and you it, it it will be considered as loss first of all this difference will be taken to profit and loss account whether the difference is a loss or gain because it is a case of integral foreign branch ultimately it will be taken to profit and loss account this is how you need to convert the trial balance is it clear to you or not now if I will take same question, same question, again the same question, but this time I have written consider it as a non-integral foreign operation. Every information given below, same information because same question I have printed it again. Now when I will convert, because it is a case of non-integral foreign operation, when I will convert, fixed asset will be con converted on the basis of closing rate. This is the only difference which we will get here. So 34 lakh 70. Rest of the things will remain same. Opening stock 22,000. Opening rate you will apply. Similarly, purchases you will apply. Average rate you will get this figure. Sales you will apply the average rate. You will get this figure. Goods sent uh, from head office 34 34,000. Return towards the debit side. Its corresponding value is given in the question. Expenses 5,000. Average rate. Similarly, daters closing rate. Creditors closing rate and then cash at bank 3000. You will use the closing rate to convert it. You will write the converted figure here. And now head office, its corresponding value is given. So everything will remain same in case of non integral foreign branch. Only thing is that when I will convert the fixed asset, I will have to use the what we call closing rate. Then, similar to the last question, again I am going to tell you both the sides. Correct? this time due to conversion our assets are more this is your exchange difference first of all it is exchange difference but because it is non-integral foreign branch later on this difference will be taken to foreign currency translation reserve account correct later on when i am going to prepare uh, the what we call uh, balance sheet when we learn to prepare the balance sheet this exchange difference will be taken to foreign currency translation reserve account Correct?
So this is how you have to move as far as foreign branches is concerned. We will chat a lot regarding this and in the upcoming session I will do some practical questions. Then I just gave you an idea regarding all these things. But now in the next uh, session when I will meet you, we will do some tougher questions and then you will comprehend this particular topic and this topic too will appear to you almost like a stroll in the park. Correct? So it's time to say good night because it is almost now 10 o'clock here in Delhi. So on such note, we finish up today's this particular session to take leave of you.